Egeres HaKedosh, Simach HaVav, 26th letter, begins with a quote from the Zehar. And it says that in the time of Mashiach, when Mashiach will come, then the tree of good and evil, with all of its rulings concerning what is permissible and not permissible, what is pure and what is impure, will no longer dominate over his, over Jews because their sustenance will be from the side of the tree of life alone. The tree of life rather than the tree of knowledge which is good and evil. And there in the tree of life, which is basically the Zayar and the Kabbalah, there are no questions which comes from evil and no disagreements which comes from impurity. As it is written and the, and the spirit of unholiness I will remove from the earth. So then the scholars of Teda, the Talmud Chachamim, will no longer be sustained by the Amei Ha'aretz, by the illiterate, but rather from the side of good. But while the tree of good and evil, the Eitz Das, dominates, then these sages, who are compared to Shabbos and Yom Tif, have nothing of their own other than what they receive from the ones who are profane, which is similar to the day of Shabbos, that you have on Shabbos only what you prepare during the weekday. But when the tree of life will dominate, then the tree of good and evil will be suppressed, and the illiterate will have only what the scholars give to them, and they will be subjugated to them as if they don't exist at all. And accordingly, the permissible and the prohibited, the pure and the impure, will not be removed from the illiterate people, because concerning them, the difference between Golos and Gula is only the delivery from subjugation to the nations of the world because they didn't taste from the tree of life and therefore they will require the study of the, of the Mishnah which is the, the laws of what is permissible and what is prohibited what is pure and what is impure so the Alter Rebbe explains this Zehar so that we not mistakenly come to the conclusion that there is something impure or unholy about the study of the pure and the impure of the study of Mishnah. So the Alter Rebbe explains that when the Zehar says that the study of the pure and the impure, which is the study of the Mishnah, won't be necessary after the coming of Mashiach, the Alter Rebbe points out how after Mashiach comes we will need to study Halacha, including those laws, and that what the Zehar is talking about is a spiritual thing the process of elevating the divine sparks that had fallen through the eating of the tree of knowledge or from Shvira Sakelim in the act of creation the, the holiness that was fallen into Klippa in that sense the study of the Mishnah is primary when there is a need to elevate the divine sparks whereas after the sparks are elevated the, the way that the Mishnah is studied through debate and through question and so on that will no longer be necessary because there won't be any, any, ele any sparks to elevate. But the Mishnah itself, and even the study of the Mishnah as it is today with questions and with answers, with, uh, with Pilpul, is completely holy and completely godly. It's the effect that it has on the world that it influences Klippa and extracts the holiness from the Klippa. So the study of Yisr and Heter, which the, the, the Zeha describes as a mixture of good and evil, is that it is a study concerning those things that are good and evil, that are Klippas Mega. But the study itself is Taita, the study itself is holy. And what he says about the Talmud Chachamim, who are supported or nourished by the Ami Ha'aretz in the time of Golos, this too, the Alter Rebbe says, can't be understood literally, because in the times of the Beis Hamikdash, the Talmud Chachamim were not supported by the by the Amir Haaretz. So it must mean again spiritually, in the time of Golos, when the when the life force coming from God into the world comes to Klippa first, because everything is upside down, so it comes into Klippa first, and from the Klippa, the Talmud Chachamim receive the godly light then there is a need to, to elevate 
and to bring back the sparks that have fallen into the klipa, and that's through the study of pilpul questions and answers. Now, for today's portion of the Tanya, for the ninth day of Cheshvan, which is on page 288, a few lines past the middle of the page of the period, the number at the bottom of the page is 560. Now the Rebbe is going to say that even in Taita itself, not only in the world does the study of Mishnah and Pilpul elevate the sparks that are in the world, that have fallen into Klippa, but in Taita itself there is also an advantage to the study through Pilpul. And the one who is wise will understand an even more amazing thing, a benefit that comes from the study of the Mishnah of Halacha. What occurs above in heaven, that which occurs, that happens, that is caused in heaven above through the study and the clarification of a halacha from the Gemara and from the Paiskin. The, the clarification of a subject in halacha that was concealed prior to the study, because through this clarification of the halacha, we elevate this halacha from the concealment within klipa, in which it was kept concealed, to the point where it was not known at all, certain halachas that were discovered in later years, in the times of the Gemara, or even later, a halacha that simply was not known. Why wasn't it known? Because Klippa concealed it. Or even if the halacha was known, but it wasn't understood properly and its reasons were not understood. Because the reason for the halacha is the element of chachma, the divine chachma, as it is in Atzilus. And yet it was in Klippa. Even this level of Chachma was in Klippa. It was concealed and therefore not known to the people. Elements and sparks of the level of Chachma fell into Klippa and is concealed by Klippa. And they are there in a state of exile. This Chachma law is exiled within the Klippa. The klippas overwhelm it. And they conceal, the klippa conceals this element of taira, this particular halacha, both from the higher worlds and from the lower worlds. And that's what he means when he says in the Zehar, that the kushis, the questions and the answers, the pilpul, comes from the side of evil. It doesn't mean, God forbid, that the discussion of Taita, the pilpul of Taita, is from evil, but rather the concealment that makes it necessary to have the pilpul, that concealment comes from evil. Were it not for the evil, the halacha wouldn't be concealed, and therefore there'd be no need for the pilpul. But the pilpul itself is the method of Taita, and, and has the holiness of Taita. As for example... When a person makes a cheshma nefesh in the process of doing tshuva and he's thinking about his regrets of how he served God poorly in the past and wants to serve God better, so what he's thinking about is unholy. He's thinking about a lack of godliness. But the fact that he's thinking about it, the cheshma nefesh itself, this is holiness. This is how he removes the klippa and extracts the holiness and returns it back to its source. The Hayem Yem for the ninth day of Cheshvan, for Tes Cheshvan, the Rebbe writes, when my father was four or five years old, which means when the Rebbe Rashab was four or five years old, he went to his grandfather, who was the Tzemach Tzedek, 
and it was on Shabbos Vayera, and he began to cry. And he said, why does God show himself to Avram, our father Avram, but does not show himself to us? So Tzamech Tzedek answered, when a tzaddik decides at the age of 99 years old that he should circumcise himself, he deserves that God should appear to him.